This show is brought to you by listeners like you. Support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. I'm hungry, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dog, a set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pain for the taste of the blood. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here. Uh, talking with uh, people in and around indie wrestling, and we got a great one today. Uh, of course, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to Indie Mayhem Show on the iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube or Facebook page. And keep an eye out on that Facebook page, because a lot of times these interviews we do are throughout the week, whenever we can get our, 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 a hold of people, and uh, and we have some live streams that you can uh, chime in on as we go as well. And maybe you can uh, drop some questions and look out for events uh, for any announced interviews coming up that you can participate in. Or if you have any questions or anybody that you think we should talk to on the show, today's today is no different. is a is a is a contributed uh, guest. Uh, by our, our buddy Tragar. Uh, so please hit us up at good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com on the email or on uh, the, uh, the the hotline at 412 206 WMS0. And uh, what's up, Trey? Speaking of in the uh, chat room right now, uh, of course. So with me, I'm really excited because um, uh, my guest today is, is uh, I don't know, very eclectic. Uh, a lot of stuff uh, uh, in her profile when I was looking her up. She's a singer-songwriter. She's an announcer for wrestling promotions. She's got to sit down with Mick Foley. Maybe we'll get into that as well. Kid Kid Jet joins us uh today on the uh, uh, sporting the wonderful uh purple purple hair i appreciate that <laughs> thank you so much you know what I, I hate to disappoint anyone but i'm wearing a wig today oh no oh no i know i know I <laughs> kayfabe <that>. no <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for joining us well first of all a little, little bit of an icebreaker of course you do work around the uh, the wrestling industry uh so what was kind of your first experience um or what was your first memory even of of, of pro wrestling I got into the pro wrestling uh, game kind of late, to be honest with you. My dad's always been into it. Uh, my dad is a huge Bruno San Martino fan. Um, and I got into it because I liked The Miz. Believe it or not, I was a big <laughs> fan. I know, I know. I was, <laughs> I was a big fan of the real world. And a buddy of mine, back when WrestleMania was here in Miami at WrestleMania 28, was like, hey, we should go to WrestleMania. And I was like will the Miz be there? And they're like, yes, absolutely. So off to WrestleMania, I went and uh, I got the bug and I've been absolutely hooked ever since. So I, I contribute this all to the Miz and uh, he's awesome. And that's really it. I mean, I wish I had a better story, but it just kind of happened. It literally fell into my lap. And, and yeah, that's, that's that. That's awesome. So, so from there, like, like, did you did you go from there to like, were you aware of uh, the indie promotions in the area or anything at that point, or was that something that 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 you kind of fell in after that discovery with the with 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 the Miz? Yeah, <laughs> I I wasn't really that familiar with any of the indie promotions, to be honest with you. And I was fortunate enough to meet a gentleman named Rob Naylor, who was formerly with NXT Talent, and uh, he took me under his wing. And I was already doing hosting gigs and kind of involved in the comic world. And, and he took me under his wing, like I said, and he's like, hey, I think you can do this. There's an opportunity for you to be a ring announcer. And I was fortunate enough to get in with uh, WWN and FIP. And from FIP, I went on to start doing Shine. And it just kind of, it kind of happened. But I definitely attribute it to my buddy Rob. That's awesome. Uh, so it's like, what was, what was that discovery like for you to see, you know, obviously, you know, from WrestleMania to seeing, you know, something on this level of indie wrestling? I absolutely adore indie wrestling. There's just a really good feeling that you get watching it. It feels like, like home almost. And I love getting to know these guys and, and it's been so wonderful to know these, these wrestlers on the indie scene and then watch them now become incredible superstars. So obviously there's a lot of talent out there and I can't wait to see who's going to get called up next. So, <laughs> Awesome. Uh, that leads into a question uh, by Trey here that just... Hi, went, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> she, My buddy. He, he asks, uh, he asks uh, uh, what, what's the best match that you, you've ever uh, uh, ring announced for? Oh, that I've gotten to ring announce for? Oh my goodness gracious. This is like, oh man, there's been so many great ones. I have to, 
anything specific. Anything with Sue Young in it uh, is, you know, is going to be next level. I absolutely love Sue Young. I love getting to watch her at Shine and Fest and Ronin. The best match that I've gotten to announce for, oh my gosh, Trey, you stumped me. This is like, we're starting off strong here. Um, let me think of something that I've done recently. Uh, gosh. I would say, you, you, I, looking at the talent list, the, like even the promotions you listed there, you're around a lot of good talent. So I am around some incredible talent, and I hate to pick a favorite. And when people ask me who's my favorite wrestler, I just say Trevin Adams, who is, of course, with WWN, because I refuse to pick a, my favorite person from the Shine roster. It is absolutely impossible. You cannot yeah. pick just one. How do you pick? There's so many talented women. <laughs> How do you pick? And how is that being being involved with such a? Uh, we got a picture on the screen now of you uh, in in the shine ring, of course, announcing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, there's a great article about you over at the Miami Miami Herald website, um, and a lot of the things that you got into. Great for research. Uh, but uh, you know, what, what, what's it like being around a promotion like that? That is like you know, really putting women um, um, on on a platform like that. It's been so fantastic, and. Like like we had mentioned before, I didn't know much about the indie scene, so when I got into it, I didn't realize that you can have an entire promotion of just women, but these women are just as great as the men, if not better than some of the men, and it's just been such a wild and fun ride. I've had so many great interactions. I, I had posted something a couple of days ago with Soraya, which was my very second Shine show, and she spit in my face, and you know, anything can happen at Shine. I've had like kendo sticks flying over my head uh, from matches with Allison Kay and Sue Young, and the energy in there is just incredible, and um, they just have the best fans. Like the, the fans of Shine and Shimmer are so incredibly supportive, and I I, I love it. I love it so much. That's amazing. Um, and uh, he also asked, you know, is there anybody that that you would love to like announce, like that yes. you haven't had the opportunity to? Yes, and I've mentioned this before, and it is Edge. I want to announce for Edge, and I know that's never going to happen <laughs> because obviously he's retired. But just the opportunity to say the rated R superstar <laughs> in a ring would just be incredible. So, Edge, if you ever – well, I know he can't really make a comeback, but if you ever want an announcer, call me. I'm available. You never know. He can make an appearance, you know. You never know. Maybe well, I mean, convention. He does. Well, you're, yeah, I say you're, you're involved in the comic conventions. I mean, we can talk mm-hmm. about that for a moment here sure. um you 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 apparently are are like the at the intersection of everything awesome and geeky uh <laughs> That's me and i love it <laughs> i'm so blessed so uh and, and and i say maybe you can announce edge as he, as he comes to one of these things um Come on out edge please, <laughs> how, please. Did you, how did you get involved with the with the conventions that is another thing that entirely fell into my lap, right place, right time situation, which just seems to be my life. I'm just in the right place at the right time, I suppose. Um, I was working with a local indie promotion called Ronin, which is based um, down here in South Florida. And the gentleman that previously owned Ronin also owned Florida Supercon. Well, still owns Florida Supercon. And I was doing their interviews and they had a convention coming up and he's like, hey, do you maybe just want to do one or two of the interviews? And I was so nervous because they like, they set me up with like Karen Gillen, who of course is, you know, a huge big star. And I'm trying to remember who else was there. Um, They get a lot of like wrestling people as well. I don't think I did any wrestlers my first time, but I was so nervous. But just the thrill of being on stage and getting to ask questions that people don't normally get to ask was just such a thrill. And so I've been doing that for maybe about, a year and a half now and um starting in april i pretty much have a convention every weekend so that's just i'm so i'm so excited can't wait that's amazing that's amazing that's like that's like that's like the uh the 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 goal equivalent for for pro wrestling is to have a gig every weekend right yeah (laughs) i mean there's there's definitely some wrestling things sprinkled in there so we'll have to make it all work but actually starting in april uh Florida Supercon Wrestling is coming back to Miami, which combines cosplay and wrestling. So it's like my two worlds are finally combining. And I will be April O'Neil, the reporter, coming at you live from Florida Supercon. I was actually just listening to uh, uh, your last uh, podcast up on on SoundCloud, which is an interesting concept uh, for you guys. So it's X's (laughs) and O's, and you do the podcast with your ex-boyfriend. I do. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, my ex-boyfriend, um, we dated for six years. We've been broken up for quite a few. He has a fiance. He's moved on. I've moved on. We're both so happy, but, uh, 
Yeah, it's such a good time. And, you know, it took us a while before things kind of came full circle. But we always knew we wanted to be able to work together. And we were never able to when we were dating. And now we finally are. And we don't just do the podcast. We also do Florida Supercon stuff. And it's just been, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, if you would have told me this was what was going to happen with the two of us, I never would have believed you. But, yeah, here we are. (laughs) Uh, well, the reason I brought that up because you brought up the turtles, and, and you were you, you said you wanted to come out to the, the the turtle power song from the first movie in the oh, 80s. it's going down, <laughs> it's going down. Like this is happening. It's it's happening. I mean, it's either that or like the go ninja, go ninja, go. But I think I think crime time kind of beats out Vanilla Ice in that case. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I say you, you uh, with the comic cons, you've had a chance to, to you know uh, kind of interact with some wrestling. I, I see you had a, a conversation with uh, Mick Foley as part of that. So the Mick Foley thing is another <laughs> another very unique, interesting thing that happened. So before I got into like any of the independent scene, I met Mick Foley when he was doing his tour. Like he was touring around at comedy clubs, and he was the one guy that. I really knew about before I even got, besides him is obviously like everyone knows Mick Foley. I mean, he's Mick freaking Foley. So I got a chance to meet him at one of his independent shows and I asked him straight up. I said, Hey, I would love to pick your brain sometime. And he's like, okay. He gave me his contact information. And a couple weeks later I went out to Boston and um, I got to interview him. And then from that moment on, I kind of went on a little mini tour with him to a bunch of his different shows. Like oh, I went wow. with him to Boston, I went with him to Pittsburgh. Um, we went to California, a bunch of other cities, uh, Houston, Austin. And I would um, ask Mick Foley trivia at his show. And um, it was great just being on the road with him, really getting to pick his brain. He is an incredible, charitable man. And I have nothing negative to say about him. He is so wonderful. And I'm so glad that he's in the position that he's in right now, getting to be back on television. And yeah, he's doing the convention circuit. And uh, we, uh, yeah, he, he's, a, he's definitely somebody that um, I consider a very, very uh, close friend. It, it, it sounds like from all this, uh, you, you're the kind of person that um, finds themselves in front of a lot of opportunities and knows how to take advantage of them. <laughs> from, you have from the sound of it, uh, do you have any any kind of secrets for? Because I, I, we know I know a lot of people that are trying to, uh, uh, especially around indie wrestling or 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 outside or around entertainment or doing things online, um, that are looking for that kind of next step for that. Do you have any tips for people to to you know kind of move forward? I guess is the question. Sure. The one thing that I always tell everybody is it never hurts to ask. And um, I've kind of learned that if you put yourself out there, send an email, try to get a phone number, like contact people, the worst thing that they can say is no. And the best thing they can say is yes. And then you never know what opportunities you'll get from that. And um, I've been fortunate enough to get a couple opportunities just by asking, hey, can I pick your brain? Hey, do you have a a minute to talk or so? Um, Hey, can I come to this convention and do this and that and this and that? And um, yeah, it does not hurt to ask. That's awesome. Um, well, uh, let's uh, get to um, a couple. Oh, wait, wait. I had one more thing I had to ask before we get to okay. our wrap up questions. I'm sure. I am. I am meant to ask by Tragar, and he'll kill me if I don't. Uh, okay, about okay. your love for Alice Cooper. Oh, my love for Alice Cooper. Oh my god. <laughs> I am, um, without a doubt, I'm obsessed with Alice Cooper. I'm actually getting an Alice Cooper tattoo, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think I'm going to get it on my arm, and it should say, feed my Frankenstein. Just saying. You know, I don't want to go with the typical, like, eyeball. Um, hold on. I have, like, my DVD, which sits next to me all the time. I, still have, I, I just got this one, um, and he's open. Anyway, I'm obsessed with Alice Cooper. I love his music. I just think he is so fun and funky and another sweet guy that I've had the opportunity to host a panel for. He was so nice and so kind. And that makes me such a big fan. You know, when you meet someone that you consider an idol and they are just so wonderful and so kind, it just, it makes you an even bigger fan. And, um, you know, I've definitely come across my, um, my fair share of people that weren't so nice, but Alice, um, was, was just so wonderful. I just love his music. I I love everything he stands for. I love the way he looks. I've I've tried to do my makeup like him before. It was an epic failure. Um, Hopefully it's nowhere on the internet. Don't try to search for it. Um, But yeah, just, he's my absolute favorite. Unfortunately, this upcoming tour, he's not playing in Florida. So I'm going to have to travel to go see him. I'm going to, I'm going to be that girl. I'm going to travel to see Alice Cooper. (laughs) That's awesome. Love that man. 
<laughs> That's great. Uh, of course, you're very busy, but uh, you know, generally, we like to ask, kind of, what are you, what are you watching? What are you, what, what's kind of catching your uh, attention as far as uh, wrestling these days? As far as wrestling these days, I'm really fortunate to be involved in Fest Wrestling, which is a new. Um, like indie wrestling show that just started in Gainesville. I think we've had about four shows now, but the talent they bring in, you know, they get Brian Cage. We've had, um, gosh, we had Sammy Callahan. The last show they tagged together as team twins. They just won the Love Cup, which was the last big event. So I would definitely say Fest Wrestling is the next thing to look out for. And, of course, I have to shout out to Shine, and I have to shout out to Ronan and... um, Yeah, I love my Florida indie promotions. There's so many great ones down here that I'm not involved with, but are so incredible. So Florida is a really great place to be right now. That's awesome. And of course, you guys do have a little bit of uh, infusion, I guess, with NXT and TNA all operating out of Orlando, right? Yeah, that that definitely helps. And I mean, it's a good thing and a bad thing, because like I said, we, we have some great girls like, you know, recently Heidi went up and Kimberly went up and Crazy Mary went up. So, uh, it you know, it definitely changes the rosters and especially the, the shine roster. But now we're just going to bring in more ladies that will get their time to shine. That's awesome. There's always there's always some talent to fill a gap, right? Oh, we're, absolutely. So, so. It is. It is abundant. There is lots and lots of incredible talent. And the other thing that I always say is there's, oh gosh, this is going to sound so corny, but there's a, a billion stars in the sky and there, there's enough room for everybody to shine. Just because one person makes it doesn't mean that you can't make it. There's enough space for all of us to, to coexist. And that, that's that's one of the things I, I, I don't like seeing is people feel like there can only be one, but that's not the case. Like there could be many of us, there can be thousands of female ring announcers. And I think there should be, and there can be millions of women wrestlers and and there should be two. And there can be millions of indie promotions and the more the merrier, like let's all just get along and let's just (laughs) make brilliance and let's, let's do the damn thing. There's definitely a lot of opportunity these days, uh, more than, more than there probably ever has been, uh, for, for any of those lines. So, um so uh and finally uh you know you worked around uh indie wrestling at least in the announcer capacity for an interviewing of course for a bit what is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling for you the best and worst thing oh gosh um the best thing 100 percent, is the fans and just how supportive they are and i love fans coming out and like even seeing people at like an nxt or wwe event wearing their favorite indie wrestler shirt i just think that's so incredible we have a referee his name is frank gastineau and even he has a t-shirt and i i see people wearing his shirt i think oh, i've heard of this guy up here like he's, he's, he's been brought up to me a couple of times He's wonderful. You should definitely have him on the show. He, he knows what he's doing. One of my favorites. Uh, the worst thing? Maybe the fact that I wish it could run seven days a week. And unfortunately, it usually only runs a couple days over the weekend. Like, I just wish it could be a, a full-time thing. I, I wish I could attend the wrestling event Monday through, through Sunday. Awesome. Gosh, is that such a PC answer? I, I, just, <laughs> I don't feel like throwing anyone under the bus here. Like, the worst thing is the, the – I, I, gosh – Maybe like no, I can't. I can't think of it. That's fine. No, no, that's fine. People, people have been very inventive with their answers uh, since we since we've uh, done this on the show. So I really appreciate it. Um, well, you have a ton of stuff happening, so I'm just going to give you the four. What should people check out to get to know Kid Kid Kid, uh, kid Cadet? Remix. Um, to get to know. Kid Sorry, Cadet. there's another kid. Something else that's in, from the area that's the very opposite of you, and I don't want to accidentally plug that one. So. Oh, no, really? Uh-oh. <laughs> I'll tell you off air. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I mean, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Kid Cadet. I love interacting with everybody. My Instagram is kid underscore cadet. My Snapchat is I'm Kid Cadet. I'm, like, kind of all over the board here. And um, my next thing is Shine, which will be in Ybor City, uh, Shine 41, on March 10th. And uh, I turned 31, like, oh, my God, in, like, a week. <laughs> <laughs> but I look 18, right? Just saying. Awesome. Um, yeah. All right. Well, go check her out. She's especially if you're in the Florida area. Um and uh, and 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 check out her stuff online and 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 she's a singer too. She's a, she's I was just listening to her cover of uh, Eric Bischoff's theme music actually oh, on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. She has on her YouTube page. So. Yeah, actually, um, uh, occasionally my buddy Nick Hausman over at Russell Zone um uses that theme song at the end of that podcast. I actually did um one of the 
talk his Jericho openings to. So <laughs> that's been interesting <laughs> and fun. And if anyone else needs a theme song, contact me. I'm available. And please contact me. Um, let's make this happen. Come on. There you go. As, as somebody that's in production myself, it is uh, definitely highly beneficial if you bring your own theme song to a show. Look at Cole Cabana. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. That wouldn't be an easy one to cover, but I'm looking, I'm looking for more to cover. I, yeah. I have some ideas. Exactly. Uh, so thank you so much. Check her out uh, online and uh, check out everything else. The rest of the interviews over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This is a, a episode with over 150 of them at, at this point that we talked to on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, people that are have been or are currently in about every wrestling promotion on the planet at this point. Uh, represented there. Uh, subscribe, of course. Please hit us up, 412-206-WMS0 or goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Support all the shows at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. And until next time, please support Indie Wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com. Dot com.